Hi everybody and welcome to this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. The Bisons are 5-0 after a 24-20 victory on Saturday night against Washita Baptist. And Ronnie Huckabee, I tell you what, that was one of those games. So many times we talk about big games, they don't always live up to the expectations. Harding Washita does that, it seems like, every year. It, it is rarely a disappointment as far as the kind of game that we play with those guys. And I think that just... You know, that goes back for a long, long time. I mean, if you talk to Coach Jerry Moat, you know, who was on the first team in the modern day era, uh, he'll tell you that this has been a rivalry that has come down to the wire over and over and over again. You can always just about throw the records out. Uh, there have been years when OBU was having a great season and we weren't having a great season and we get, you know, we come to this game and it's a dog fight and, and the reverse has been true also. Uh, it was exactly what I expected it to be. Two teams playing extremely hard, trying to win the ball game. You know, there's a there's a trophy associated with the game too. So, uh, a lot to play for. And of course, we're having a great year, and we want to continue that. And uh, the fact that we were able to come out on top was was huge for our football team and huge for our program. How big was the composure from your football team on Saturday night when you could really talk about the? the game because the first half, a lot of big plays, 17-17 right. at the half, second half, it was a uh, grind it out right. and uh, really a smash mouth type of battle, And but your team really had a lot of composure, I thought. Yeah, the first half, as you said, you know, big plays dominated the, the, the whole half and we ended up tied going in at halftime and then in the second half, the defenses just kind of settled in and nobody was making much happen and uh, fortunately for us as we got into the you know, middle to the latter part of the fourth quarter, we we found something that we thought would be effective, and it was very effective and allowed us to break a big play and then run the clock out. So uh, that's the way those games go sometimes. I mean, when you have two teams that are playing extremely hard and both of them are playing really sound on defense, uh, you're not going to run up and down the field on each other. And uh, we we were just we just felt very fortunate to come out on top. And again, the Bisons won 24 to 20 on Saturday night. We have a great show ahead for you with a lot of great highlights, and we'll take a break here in a moment and get ready for the first half highlights. But before we do that, let's look at the sights and sounds on Saturday before the Washita Baptist game. It was a tremendous atmosphere on campus. What's up, man? You left some leaves burning out here. Yeah, I, I just I, there was a I had just came in just for a second. Come on, man. If it's too hot to touch, it's too hot to leave. You could torch the whole neighborhood. It's a good point. There's smoke. Key. Nine out of ten wildfires are caused by humans. Only you can prevent wildfires. I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org caregiving. 
Hi, everybody. Welcome back to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. And Coach, before we went to break, you could see uh, the Brotherhood Walk. And I, it was my first time. I had a chance to walk with you guys and to see so many people out there. That's a great experience. Isn't that a neat deal? Yeah. And to think about how far the, the tailgating atmosphere has come in the last few years, it's just, uh, it's just, it brings joy to my heart. I mean, you look out there and you see the kids and you see the students and the, the different tents and the people that are cooking ribs and hamburgers and everything. And uh, Peggy was out there, my wife Peggy was out there for the first time. And she said, her term was, it's just a wonderland out here. Right. And, uh, uh, man, that's that is so awesome for our school and our football program, and uh, uh, it, it just gives me great joy to see that. I was thoroughly impressed. It was a late arriving crowd because they were having such a good time out on the on the lawn, and they were still trying to get inside the gate after the football game had started there in the end of the first quarter. Right now, we want them to get there and get yeah. in the stands, yeah. but uh, uh, I certainly understand uh, yeah. wanting to enjoy that as long as they possibly yeah. can. And Coach, this is what we were playing for on uh, on Saturday night, and, and that traveling trophy is such a big part of this rivalry. This has been a great addition to this rivalry, and if you want to go back to the history of that, uh, Mr. Wayne Hartsfield, who was the president of First National Bank, uh, kind of got this whole thing going back years ago. And Donnie Miller, who was the president of Ridges Bank, was heavily involved in that. Mr. Hartsfield is Todd Knight's father-in-law. Uh, Julie, his daughter, is married to Todd. And, and of course, he was a lifelong Searcy resident and, uh, you know, loved Harding, too. And uh, so he said, we need something to kind of co commemorate this rivalry. And that's how the traveling trophy came about. And uh, it's been heavily contested ever since. It was heavily contested before the trophy, mm -hmm. but now we just got a little added icing <laughs> on the cake. Okay, okay. So we told you we have some exciting highlights to get to. The first half was extremely exciting with a lot of big plays, and we'll do that right now and get into first half highlights, first quarter highlights as we start right here. And we see after your defense gets the football to your offense on a quick three and out, and now the offense here with Michael Latou. The first play of the game, we, we just handed the ball to the fullback in the B gap and uh, he ended up making 11 yards. We thought, here we go off the races and man, the B, B back game was uh, not very effective after that, to be honest with you. They did a great job of shutting that down. That was a toss play uh, going to the left and this is the counter play to Eric Kelly. Uh, this is the first drive and we got a little going there. We, they ended up stopping us, but Tristan Parsley, who had a fantastic game for the Bisons, knocked that field goal down and uh, you know got us on the, got us on the board first. Great job by our defense, and, and we knew this was going to be a challenge for us defensively because they are just so strong offensively. What a pass right there by Austin Warford, who is a, Austin is a stud football player. You know, he's he can run, he can throw, and uh, that's Allie Freeman who caught that pass, who's one of the top freshmen in our league, and uh, anyway, just really impressed with how they they play offense and their offensive line is very strong too. That's Park on just the double option. Uh, ended up converting a first down and this was a huge play in this football game. You know, Park overthrew Andrew a little bit, but he tipped the ball to himself, takes it to the house. That's a 69 yard touchdown pass and boy, we were, that was very timely. So now moving into the second quarter with the Bisons right now with a 10-7 advantage. Right, and this is a, a tackle in the backfield, which uh, you know, our defense, as I said, did a fantastic job. Uh, forced them to kick a short field goal. Which I thought was critical to keep them to a field goal try there oh, because yeah, they were deep in the red zone. Yeah, their red zone, uh, you know, their red zone, zone proficiency was, was greatly affected by how well our defense played. That was a huge, huge fumble recovery for us. It gave us an opportunity to have a short field, and we have done a really good job offensively converting those opportunities this year. This is this third down. Third down, toss play to Grant Kimberlin, and uh, good blocking out in front of Grant, and he finds the end zone, and uh, this put us up 17 to 10. Now, the, yeah, Bison's lead by seven after Trayvon Biglow came up with that big recovery. Uh, this is the handoff. Uh, uh, that's Brandon. Uh, Mark's going to the left there, and this is a great job by Arthur Akers sacking the quarterback. That was, you know, that was a critical play in that football game. Yeah, expand on that. I thought that was one of the plays that would probably it probably did get lost throughout the evening because Washington was driving. They had a timeout left, 
and getting close to field goal range. And we knew every point was going to be so crucial. Right. And that sack took them out of field goal range, and they wound up just running the clock out for the rest of the half. You hit the nail on the head. That was a critical play in the game. And uh, so proud of Arthur and his determination to get to the quarterback. Uh, they don't get sacked easily. If you look at the stats year by year, they really do a great job of taking care of their quarterback. And plus, Austin is so difficult to sack anyway. He's so dynamic with his feet. And to get that sack at that time was critical as we headed into halftime. So, uh, you know, the 17-17 tie going in at half, uh, pretty much what we expected. Was in halftime, I thought it came at a perfect time. Both teams needed a, a little break right. to kind of reset because it had been a very intense first half. It was, and it, it ended up being a very intense it second did. half too. And, uh, you know, both teams went in at halftime, and I'm sure they were making their adjustments as we were. And as we had talked about earlier, when we came back out for the second half, it would pretty much became a defensive struggle to the very end. Yeah. And uh, that's, a, that's a tribute to both defenses and how well they played. So 17-17 at this point in our highlights at halftime. We'll come back and watch a very exciting second half right after this. The inherent right to work is one of the elemental privileges of a free people. Endowed as our nation is with abundant physical resources and inspired as it should be to make those resources and opportunities available for the enjoyment of all, we approach re-employment with the real hope of finding a better answer than we have now. Donate to Goodwill, where your donations help fund job placement and training for people in your community. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. We are at halftime. If you just joined us at this point in our highlights, 17-17 as we get sent to look at third quarter highlights. And the Bisons would get the football to begin play uh, in the second half. But then Washita would, would turn the Bisons away and the Tigers would get it back. Right. Uh, you know, we've been pretty proficient on mm -hmm. those first possessions of the second half. And that, that has a lot to do with our philosophy. Now, this was a huge... Football play right here. This is a scoop and score. I'm pretty sure that Scott's going to outrun that offensive tackle. And uh, we had an inadvertent whistle and blew the play dead. The play wasn't dead. And you know, when that happens, you're at the mercy of the rule book. But uh, man, that was tough. And Washita already down. That was a huge yeah. play, Billy, right there by ben Benjamin Shields mm -hmm. that to stop them short of that first down. And that was on third down. And I thought your defense did a great job there to regroup after a crucial play like that. There's no doubt because in their mind, we just lost seven mm -hmm. points. Mm -hmm. And uh, the fact that we were able to regroup, hold them to a field goal, and then come back out, and you can just see how these guys are doing a great job of, of containing an extremely dangerous offense. Great pursuit to the football. Uh, yeah, that's Chris Oliver, who's uh, rush for over 200 yards in a couple of ball games, and we held him to 84. Held, held their quarterback to 40-something yards rushing. Uh, great job by our guys. This is a flat pass complete to Eric Kelly, and uh, we are just having a hard time of getting anything going against their defense also. And, and as I said earlier, that's a tribute to them. Very dangerous, Allie Freeman. Right. Yeah, this was that that was a great open field tackle by Gavin De Los Santos, yes. who plays offensive tackle for us. A huge play in the game that, that kind of went unnoticed. Another time where he dropped the ball, we've got people sitting right there, and uh, you can hear the crowd in the background. This is a critical time in the ball game. That was another one I thought we were going to be real clo close to getting. That was Frank Herbert. Bison's right now trailing 20 to, to uh, 17. Good job of fielding the ball by Corey. Mm -hmm. And here's the offensive play of the game. We run the midline option. Park breaks it. 
And uh, he's veering away from the tackler and gets tackled on the two yard line. Great job by our line blocking and our backs blocking and Park gets in on the quarterback sneak and uh, boy, that was a huge momentum shift in the football game. And a big extra point coming right here to uh, make it more than a field goal. Right, without yeah. a doubt. Yeah, that puts added pressure on the offense when they know they got to score to beat you. And now the Bison's about to come up with their second turnover of the game and uh, needed, needed both of them. And obviously this sets it up with a big play there. Right, this is a tackle for loss in the backfield. A second and 14, I believe, is the situation. And uh, Isaiah Jefferson with another ball hawking play. And we've talked about Isaiah in previous shows. And uh, he's pretty good with the ball in his hands, too. Mm -hmm. Of course, I was scared to death he was going to get that ball away from his you body and, and get stripped. <laughs> uh, but uh, that was a tremendous play. And now we got four minutes on the clock. Yep. And we got to run this clock out. And I was so proud of our guys, the way they executed. Uh, this is That's another midline option, just like the one that he had the long run on. On third down, converting. Yeah, and that ended up being, that play ended up being a critical play for us. You can see there it is again. And there's the first down that got us to the point where we knew we could run the clock out. And there's the sweetest formation in football, <laughs> victory. And uh, what a great win for the Bisons. Uh, you can tell by the by our guys that was a really important to uh, important win for us and got us to five and zero, oh, regain control of the trophy, and uh, just all around great night for the Bisons. Bisons move up in this week's coaches poll to number sixteen. Park Parrish is the co-offensive player of the week in the Great American Conference. Very uh, deserved there. He wound up with 144 yards rushing, had a 69-yard touchdown pass right. as well to uh, Andrew Dather and a rushing touchdown. He was very productive and uh, very timely. And what we needed to happen, especially in that fourth quarter series with the, with the midline game. And as I said, you know, knew it was going to be a tough battle, knew it was going to come down to the end more than likely, and so proud of our guys with the way that they, they executed when the game was on the line. That's the mark of a good football team. Mm -hmm. And uh, good football teams in close games find a way to win. And that's what our guys did and uh, I'm just so proud of them. Dalen Markham and Dalen Skidmore, the two Dalens, both with 11 tackles in the game. That's a lot of tackles. And, you know, up to this point, our defensive players have, we've subbed out so much because we've had games that were under control and going into the fourth quarter and those guys played you know the majority of the snaps and that's what they're capable of uh, tremendous performances by both of those guys how much do you want to brag on your defense there in the second half because they were on the football field a lot there in the third quarter and they were relentless what a lot of people would not know is that washington baptist in my opinion is that they're a top five offense in d2 uh, because of the threat of their quarterback. He throws the ball great. If you saw the early throw that he made to Alec Freeman in the end zone, he put that ball right on the money. He's very difficult to hem up. He's like a running back. You know, He's a huge part of their rush game. Their offensive line is so well coached and do such a great job. And for, the, for our, off our, excuse me, our defense to come out in the second half and hold those guys to three points and uh, give us a chance to, to score a winning touchdown in the fourth quarter, tremendous job and I know how hard our defensive coaches worked all last week preparing for this game and uh, my hat is off to them. I thank them so much for their work and for the way that those guys played and uh, we did we did enough to win the football game and that's what we needed to do. Bison's winning 24-20 it was a happy interview room and after the break we'll have a chance to catch up with Park Parrish and Isaiah Jefferson after the break as this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee continues in a moment. Oh, look, a redhead. <gasps> Staring contest! You still got it. I know. Come alive with the forest. The dad was cute. You were looking right at us. Visit discovertheforest.org to find a forest near you. We taught him how to hit a baseball. How to hit a receiver, the strike zone, the net. You taught him how to hit the upper corner. You even taught him how to hit the open man. 
how much time have you spent teaching him what not to hit? Back on Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. We always love to catch up with the Bisons, especially after a win. They're always in a lot better mood right. after a victory. And so far, five wins on the season. Park Parrish and Isaiah Jefferson after the game on Saturday. Well, uh, we knew going in uh, early in the week, we talked about some stuff from just watching film last year and watching them this year. We knew that uh, we were going to have an opportunity to make, you know, hit a home run uh, in the passing game. And uh, uh, we you know, kind of drew a beat on them early, and we exploited that weakness that we saw. Uh, and Andrew made a heck of a play on that catch. Uh, I actually thought he dropped it. I turned around and was, you know, kind of kicking myself for it. And then I hear the crowd go crazy. Turn around, he's in the end zone. So uh, I'll have to watch it on film to see how good of a catch it was. But, uh, yeah, I mean, we just we knew that uh, we, we had an opportunity to hit a home run. We just had to finally, you know, hit, get all our blocks and, uh, and get everybody in the right position, and, and we did. It worked out in the end for us. Man, they controlled the ball, uh, I felt like, for a lot of the game. And uh, we knew we had some good stuff talked about at halftime running that midline right there, and we thought that we would have them uh, up the middle. And uh, sure enough, we finally got, got the look that we wanted, and, uh, and, and the blocking was excellent, and it just opened up. I mean, it was just like I could have drove a truck through there. But uh, it was nice. It was a good feeling finally breaking one. So. Uh, you're number 24. We won 24 <laughs> Thank points. You. Uh, Thank you. Thank you. Talk about the defense tonight with playing against maybe the best offense we've played this season uh, and just, just the way that – that the defense prepared and came into the game? Well, it all starts on Tuesday. Uh, the coaches really got us prepared. Uh, constant film, I would say the most imperative thing that we had to uh, take on, knowing the routes, uh, knowing their tendencies, knowing their schemes on third down. And the coaches, the coaches did a great job of uh, preparing us for that. So, uh, And our mentality since we lost two years in a row was really to get this win and get us over that hump. You know what I mean? To bring us to another echelon. And uh, I think everybody on the defense really had a, an important role to play tonight. And yeah. Talk about the interception late in the fourth quarter that led to the game winning touchdown. Um, well, you know, the, the clock was ticking. Um, and coaches, I always give it to the coaches because they put me in position to make that play. Uh, Coach Tribb and Coach Panky really coaches us really well throughout the week. And uh, we had a. It was. I was on a bigger guy. The guy was like six six. I'm like five nine. So, uh, coaches had a great scheme and great play, and I was in great position. I was able to uh, make the interception. I always love to hear him talk about assistant coaches. Right. And when you talk about Coach Tribble, I mean, what an asset he is. When Isaiah Jefferson talking about him. Right. And that's not surprising because our our players love our coaches, mm -hmm. and they our coaches invest so much into these guys and. And uh, I've said it before, but man, am I ever blessed to get to work with the men that I get to work with every day, uh, every single one of them. Uh, they love this program. They love the kids that they get to work with. They're tremendous mentors for them. Uh, you know, it's a whole. It's about a whole lot more than football. It's about uh, identifying what it means to be an authentic man, uh, to to treat your wife the way your wife needs to be treated. To parent your children when they need to be parented. And so I want our guys to be around these guys as much as they possibly can because they set such a great example for them. And uh, you know, I, I keep having multiple people come up to me, especially when we are on the road. And you know, when you're on the road, you have the chains on your sideline. And after the game, I'll, it invariably happens, I'll have one of the guys say, Coach, I appreciate so much listening to your coaches talk to your players on the sideline and how they how they talk with them the kind wow, of language they compliment. the kind of language they use is refreshing compared to what we hear most of the time and uh, you know that makes me as proud as anything else that we accomplish with with our program uh, whether we win or lose or whatever because that's what I want that's what Harding is uh, you know, we have to have our priorities right. We understand what our purpose is. And uh, it's uh, such a wonderful blessing to get to experience that through the venue of the game of football. And uh, really proud of my guys that I get to work with. Well, that makes me proud as a Bison fan to hear you talk about that. Let me ask you one more thing. Talk about Park Parrish. I talked about him earlier about the, the, his stats and co-offensive player of the week. But what a lot of people didn't realize is he had a lot of people here from Clinton, his hometown. They brought a bus over and uh, the FC, FCA group was here. And so he knew he had a lot of hometown <laughs> eyes on him as well. He did. And it, 
you know, what a great crowd in general. Yeah. Uh, you know, Washita always brings a good group with them. They yeah. they really follow and support their team, and, and that's always good to see too. And our stands were full, and we you know, we had the group from Clinton, and yeah. we had a lot of old Bisons here, uh, especially from the last two years. Uh, and you you can say they were interested in redemption, and you'd be right in saying that uh, they wanted to see the Bisons win and and get that trophy back. And uh, just just really proud of the the crowd that we had, and you know the support from the community, from the school, from the band, uh, just just the love that we felt from from the, the the Bison supporters was fantastic. And the Bisons did get that trophy back as they won on Saturday night. Tremendous challenge for the Bisons this week. We'll go down to Arkadelphia and face the fifth ranked. Henderson State readies on Saturday afternoon. We'll talk with Coach about that after the break. But first, after the break, we'll get a question from a fan as this week's show continues in a moment. They said a bottle was just a bottle. That no one would ever notice me. But I knew I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile. We explore dozens of complex subjects, but sometimes the world sees college students as being the same, lumps us together. That's okay, because the world may underestimate what we can do as strong, responsible, highly trained and confident Christian professionals. And isn't that what the world needs? Qualities taught one-on-one -on -one and valued by us all in a place of faith, learning, and living. Harding University. Welcome back to Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee, and we'll take the chance right now to get a question from a fan for Coach, and we'll do that right now. Coach Huckabee, my name is Ian Harden from Amarillo, Texas. Your win over Washita Baptist on Saturday set the stage for a really big challenge at Henderson on this Saturday. Both teams are coming in undefeated. How do you and your boys feel about this challenge? Well, Coach, we don't let you enjoy the win very much, do we? Let's let's move on. That's a, <laughs> hey, that's okay. Uh, man, what a blessing. What an awesome opportunity to be a part of a game like this. This is exactly what you want at this point in the season. And we have the utmost respect for the for the Reddies and the job that they continue to do. Uh, you know, Coach Maxfield has reinvented his team several times. Uh, at one point, they were one of the top passing teams in, in the country and uh, scored more points than anybody else and played great defense. And last year, what they won the conference by just controlling the football, running the ball, playing great defense, not making mistakes. And uh, each year, he seems to be able to do that with and play to the strengths of his football team. Uh, this year's no different. They are dominant on defense. Uh, they can really run. They play hard. They fly the football. Very opportunistic on offense. They've expanded their passing game. Last year they were more of a run play action team. Uh, they have some dynamic receivers uh, that are as good as anybody that will play. And they have two quarterbacks that are both good players. Uh, their starting quarterback is, is a dual threat guy. Uh, but the guy that played last week against Arkansas Tech is a big man, and he can really throw the football. He, you know, he threw for almost 400 yards last week against Tech, who has a good defense. So uh, we've got our work cut out for us, but we are so excited to be a part of a game like this, to be in this situation. As I said earlier, we feel very blessed with that. Yeah, and I was going to say, you work all season. You start in the off season, and then you get to August. And you just hope that you're maybe in a position like this to play number 16 in the right. nation against number five, both five and zero. Oh. Right. Well, we fully expected to be here. I'll be honest with you. Uh, we, th this has been our our plan from the very beginning, and our kids have never wavered from it. Uh, they put in the work in the off season. They put in the work in the summer. Had a great fall camp. We've worked hard to get to be five and zero. Oh. And uh, your payoff is you get to play in a game like this with this with these kind of implications. And uh, we can't wait. We're, you know, when when Henderson was mentioned a while ago, I could feel my stomach tightening up, and it's just that kind of a week. Uh, what a what a game to be in. What an opportunity. 
All right, Coach, always great to be with you. Have a great week. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you, Billy. That's all for this week's edition of Harding Football with Ronnie Huckabee. Don't forget, we'll have the radio broadcast on Saturday afternoon from Arkadelphia when the Bisons travel to take on Henderson State. We'll see you next time.